The very first laptop I ever did a review on on this channel was the 2015 XPS 13. It was the first thin bezeled laptop. I think it was actually one of the very first thin bezeled devices. And over the years, four years later, we now have what I would consider basically the most perfect XPS 13 that Dell could make. This is now on its fourth iteration. And it is a device that a lot of companies have learned from because at this point in time, there are so many thin bezeled ultrabooks on the market. But I still think that the 2019 XPS 13 is one of the best options that you can get for just overall 13 inch ultrabook. So they've done two major changes this year. The first one is this camera up at the top of the screen. It used to be on the bottom, like this is last year's version. For many years, they've been running these webcams that were always on the bottom of the screen and they're just I don't know, there's really bad camera angle, looked up your nose, and a lot of people complained about it. I would say for some people, it was like a deal breaker for this machine. They finally fixed it, it's now at the top of the screen, and it's a pretty good looking image. The second change that they've done on this device is actually an aesthetic change. So this device finally comes in a white on white finish. It's kind of like a silvery white on the surface of the device instead of the rose gold that they had last year. And also the texture is slightly different. So this material is, it's like slightly rougher. Not that it's like rougher sounds like it's just poorer quality. It's just a more textured material. It's actually more pleasing to hold than any of the XPS 13 that I've held in the past. It's hard to kind of convey this message over video, but when you hold it, it's slightly grippier and it's got a more matte look to the finish. The interior is still running the woven glass fiber in this white color, which I personally really like. And one of the issues that I was concerned about last year was just durability. I knew that they had mentioned that it was kind of stain resistant and stuff, but this device is a year old. Uh, this is the older one here, and it's been used every day by someone, not me, but it's been used every day, and there's literally no change, there's no wear on the surface material. Like, it still feels and looks exactly the same. However, I do notice a slight difference in color. I'm not sure if there's just a difference in manufacturing from last year's white to this year's white, or if that's just how the material ages. Like, this has a slightly warmer, like, yellowish, hue to the white. This looks more like pure white. I still think the old one looks perfectly good. It's just that there is a difference in color. The performance on the 2019 XPS 13 is a little bit better than last year's model. So this new one's running the 8565U Whiskey Lake quad-core CPU, and it's pretty good for multi-core applications, but it also has an improvement in thermals, but not through hardware because internally the thermal solution is the same as last year, but they have software this year that gives you full fan control. And this is one of the complaints I had about last year. Despite it having a pretty good thermal system, the fans ran a little too conservatively, but the new software allows you to push the device if you want to. And even when you do, the fans don't get super loud or anything. Now on the inside, not much has changed. You just have to remove a bunch of screws and you have access to the removable SSD, but the RAM and the Wi-Fi card are baked on. The battery remains unchanged on this unit with a 4K panel. I'm getting around eight and a half, nine hours of battery life. On the 1080p screen, you're probably gonna push 11 hours, but it just is very similar to last year's model, which is honestly a good thing. The ports on this device are okay. For people looking for something that's light and very portable, it kind of makes sense. There's three USB-Cs and one micro SD slot. But for people that are just looking for just a more robust port selection, there is no USB-A, which is, eh, some people are gonna miss that. They do include a dongle, but it's still a dongle and dongles are never as convenient. Uh, it charges via USB-C and it's also got the button to tell you how much battery life is on there. This is a feature that I feel like so many companies, like, I just wish they would do it. It's so cool, you press the button, it shows you how much battery is in there. And I feel like it's a feature that is so convenient and useful, but just no one seems to do it anymore. So it's nice to see that the XPS device Devices still have it. Uh, the USB-C on the left side support Thunderbolt 3, and I connected this up to the Gigabyte Gaming Box with the RTX 2070, and the performance is really good. Both gaming and video editing is awesome off of that gaming box, but if you're running that stuff on the internal GPU, it's a UHD 620, and quite frankly, it's trash. It's an internal GPU, it's what you would expect. The keyboard and trackpad, these remain unchanged. I've always liked both of these on the XPS devices. It's not like the world's best keyboard. Uh, I also wouldn't call this the world's best trackpad either, but they're very solid and I think anybody can get used to these and enjoy them. The only gripe I have with this keyboard are the page up and page down buttons. They are located right above the left and right keys, so it's pretty easy to accidentally hit them. And if you're just kind of navigating through a spreadsheet or something, you accidentally hit page up, it's a pain in the butt. Uh, there's also a fingerprint sensor on the power button, so you can log in with Windows Hello via fingerprint. The trackpad, glass surface, Windows Precision drivers, it's a great trackpad. It's a little on the small side, especially nowadays, like a lot of companies are going with huge trackpads, but this one's kind of 
the old style in terms of its size, but it's a great all around trackpad. The speakers are unchanged. They're located on the side. They sound good, good enough for what this is as an ultrabook, but you're not gonna get killer sound out of these. All right, I wanna talk about the screens for a little bit. The unit that I have this year is 4K panel. The unit that I had last year was the 1080p panel. Now they're both glossy screens. And they're both very good screens. This one's a little bit brighter than the 1080p panel. But if you're on the market and you're interested in this device and you're kind of deciding between the screens, my vote for like 95% of the people out there is to go for the 1080p screen. The 4K screen does look a little bit better. It's a little bit sharper, but on a 13 inch screen size, you are not able to discern the difference in pixel density very easily. A 13 inch 1080p panel looks very sharp. A 13 inch 4K panel looks even sharper, but it's really hard to tell the difference at that screen size. The 1080p screen isn't as color accurate as the 4K screen, but I feel like because it's more energy efficient and it's a little bit cheaper, more people should be choosing that 1080p screen instead of a 4K screen. But regardless of which one you choose, it's a solid product. XPS 13 2019, they've done such a good job. I feel like Dell improves this thing every year just a little bit and they finally fixed the webcam issue that they've had since the beginning. And it's finally like, this is as good as it's gonna get. I don't see Dell making this that much better, if at all. Uh, the one last year was running a dbrand marble skin. I'm gonna pick up another one this year, skin it, just to kind of keep it looking super fly. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.